So, welcome back, and today I'm going to show you how to bake out a displacement map with cycles only, without switching to Blender render and so on. It's actually quite nice, the map quality is very good, we're going to compare this to ZBrush baked maps, but there's one step we have to do, and that's an ugly step. We have to bake out the high resolution positions, but I'm going to show you how to do this. Okay, I've created this node here, called displacement bake, and it supports a few types, scalar displacement, 32-bit um, floating point, world vector displacement, and tangent vector displacement. You can use this here with cycles, right, with the official cycle solid. I've got a release, I've got a special version, I've modified it a little bit. It works for testing, but it doesn't really work, right? It's o it only works with polygons, not with adaptive subdivision, and only with with um, true, not with both, right? So, but for testing it's good enough, so I can show you how a tangent vector displacement would look like. Okay, but you can bake out tangent vector displacement map for other render engines if you like, <laughs> and it would be nice if someone could test that, because the maps, they, they look really good. I've got a few test cases, right, I'm gonna show you. And yeah, let's start. First of all, you need a high-resolution mesh, a multi-res mesh, and if, and if you don't have a multi-resolution mesh, project it into one. Just apply a shrink, shrink wrap modifier and project it, and then apply it into a multi-resolution step-by-step, right? And then you get something like this here. That's a ZBrush mesh for testing vector displacement, right? It got a lot of overlapping, and as you can see, the base mesh is a sphere, right? This is from ZBrush here. Morph target with a sphere. Okay, I brought it into Blender and projected it, so we have something to test. Okay, first of all, we have to bake out the positions, right? How to do that? We need this node here, and this node is very simple. You can use those outputs here, right? Very easy. Just connect position if you need the positions. That's it. Nothing more to do and make sure it's smooth, set smooth, right? And make sure your render level is on the highest, yeah, sculpt level, right, on the highest level, basically. And that's actually the map from ZBrush here, we're gonna compare this to. Then we need a new map, and this map should be bigger than the actual displacement map we wanna bake out later. So, we, this, you can see this is a 2K map, so, I would say bake the positions into a 4K map, and if you want, want to use a 4K displacement map, you should bake it into something bigger, like 6 or 8K, right, for the positions. So let's create this new, and call it positions, position, and 4K, so let's multiply this, oops, 4, and 4, and set, um, check 32-bit float, and press OK. Float, um, buffer, and linear. Okay, then we need the typical cycle stuff here. Add an image node, texture node, and set it to position, and just in case to none color. Right, it's always safe if you don't need color, just set it to none color, it's more safe. So make sure your render level is set, and go to render panel, and search for the bake panel. Okay, it's open already here, it's the bake panel. Let's push this a little up, and then you go to emission. Right, and change the margin if you like. You don't need margin of 16, four is enough. Okay, select this node. Then one important thing, you wanna render with, where is it? <laughs> I'm searching for the sampling panel, here it is. You don't want to render with more than one sample, right? Just set it to one. One sample is more than enough, it's qu yeah, the quickest, and it's enough. Okay, select the texture, set it to one sample, and just press bake. I'm gonna pause this. So here's the map, looks like that, and yeah, save it out. Save as image. Uh, okay, it's the correct folder, and search for OpenEXR. Full float RGB is enough, and yeah, compression, right? And then save it out. That's the ugly step, right, you have to do. And I've got a test with a lot of seams and it still works, right? I'm gonna show you later. So that is our oh, check alpha, so it looks better. That's uh, the position map, looks a little strange, but yeah, it should usually be that color here, blue and red and so on, green. 
So then we need um, low res mesh. So just duplicate your high res mesh and put it onto a second layer and delete the multi resolution modifier, right? So gone. And then add a subdivision surface modifier and set the render levels to 5 or the same as your render um, setting in the modulus modifier, right? If it's 6, then set it to 6 and so on. Okay, and D checks subdivide your Vs, right? It doesn't work with um, adapter subdivision at the moment. Okay, make sure it's smooth, right? It is smooth and make sure you separate the materials, right? Let's call this here, that's modulus and let's call this here bake. Okay, because this material is a little different. So then push the positions to the side and connect it to the positions high resolution, right? Non-color is set, okay. So this node here yeah, supports a, a lot of displacement types and we're gonna make out a tangent vector displacement map. We can't really use it, but it would be the same for scalar displacement, right? But most of, this, of the settings here are for a tangent vector displacement, so it's better for the tutorial and it looks cooler. <laughs> it looks more cool, okay. And there's an orientation slider, as you can see here, tangent vector displacement. It's only for the tangent vector displacement. 48 different combinations. And if you're familiar with ZBrush, ZBrush offers the same, right? Also for world, but the world maps are quite useless. Yeah, 48 different combinations and it's exactly the same as in ZBrush. So if you know your number for the different render engine, Arnold, RenderMan and so on, then you just have to plug in this number here, right? put it in, 45 or whatever it is. Okay, we're gonna use 25. Then we need the UV tangent and you have to use this node here, input tangent, right? Set it to UV, set your UV map and connect it. That's it. Then we have to connect our output, right? In this case, tangent vector displacement. Then there's also a scale value. This scale value works for all of them except positions, right? It just scales them up. Um, cycles has a factor built in, a 0.1, so you need a map that's scaled by 10 and you could do that easily in this node here. Then you don't have to multiply it in your material, right? But we don't need this because there is no factor. Okay, connect the correct one. Make sure it's smooth. Make sure the levels are set. Go to Render settings, one sample, bake panel, and a little bit of margin. And we have to create our map, right? In this case, a 2K map. So let's do this quick here. Blank 32 bit float, okay. Uh, name cycles displacement. Okay, okay, let's change this. So. Okay, that's everything. No, we need uh, an image node, right? A weird baking workflow. And then we have to choose this one, cycle displacement here, and set it just in case to non-color. The important thing that's set to colors, um, linear color, right? And then we have to bake it. So, actually we don't have to bake it. We can look at it at render time, right? Just set it to render it. And here you can see our displacement map. Right, and if you change the orientation, the color will change, right? There is no standard for a vector displacement, that's the problem. So you know, Z ZBrush offers quite a lot of combinations and those are the same, 48. I guess those are en <laughs> this is enough for most people. And yeah, we want to bake this, right? Just hit the bake button. No, select the texture, hit the bake button, okay. So here's our map, and yeah, first of all, save that map, um, save as image, open EXR, full float RGB compression, cycle displacement.exr, it's fine, save as, and decheck alpha, so we can compare this. And that's the cycles baked map. You can see that here, it's a little different on the corners. And now we're gonna compare this to a ZBrush baked map, right? I baked out this mesh here. This is actually the ZBrush mesh uh, with a morph target and I baked it out with 25 tangent flip and switch, vector displacement, tangent, to bit smooth normal and so on. And yeah, that's how it looks like. Here's it. And as you can see, it looks exactly the same. 
like 99.99 percent, right? You can't really you can't really see a difference. I can zoom in a little closer so we can see the pixels, but it's yeah, basically exactly the same except the corner here. <laughs> That's the only difference, I think, right? But it doesn't matter, right? It's the margin. Otherwise, it looks perfect. Okay, and there's the special Blender version here, but it doesn't really work, as I said. I think, did I said, say that? Anyway, let's apply the displacement map. I've got a special note for that. No, it's not in here. I have to import that. Note 3, vector displacement tangent. Okay. So, uh, yeah, that's a, that a vector displacement node, so we can render vector displacement. Connect the cycles one, and let's duplicate this and load in the ZBrush, and let's rename this to Blender, right, Blender, so we can see this better in ZBrush. And I have to connect this here. Orientation is fine, 25, right? Oops, it's the wrong. <laughs> that's the color. We need the tangent for this here. So. That only works with polygons, not with adaptive, but let's render it with a regular material, right? Just, uh, looks like it. Okay, here we go. And we need a few more samples. Let's say a few more. Oh, it's too much. Okay, and yeah, those are not enough polygons. We have to increase the polygon level. And as you can see, it works. Right, looks really good, overlapping. And if you compare that with the ZBrush mesh, let's refresh that. Right, it looks the same. Should I render this out? Yeah, let's actually render this out, right, with uh, 400 samples. So, uh, first of all, the ZBrush version and then the Blender version. So, let's render this and back in a sec. So, that's done, as you can see. Looks really good. And uh, now let's render the, let's actually call it slot here, Blender. And just so you can see this, this is the vector displacement map from ZBrush, and that's the cycles displacement. So let's connect this one and let's render again. Okay. Okay, and here's the Blender version, and let's compare the result. So Blender and ZBrush, and as you can see, it is yeah, 99.9% .9 identical. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> perfect, actually. Very good map. It would be really nice if someone could test that in a different render engine. Yeah, um, you can preview your maps, actually, like this here. Um, let's go, no. Let's disable the displacement stuff. And one level, right? You could also pre preview it as scalar displacement. It would look like this. Right, world vector displacement <coughs> and tangent with the level you want. Right, those are all different combinations, different programs. Okay, yeah, that's the workflow actually. Bake out the positions from the high resolution mesh, connect this, connect the tangent, and so on. Choose your output, copy the mesh, and set a subsurface modifier and the map. Okay, let's go to a second example. This here is a scalar map, a scalar displacement map, and you maybe know this mesh here from the other tutorial. And first of all, let's compare this, right? This is this, um, okay, actually, this is the cycles version. This is the multi resolution version, so the true polygon version, and that's the ZBrush version, right? And as you can see, it looks Right, 99.9 percent .9 identical, and now the cycles version it looks the same. Multi-race cycles, so it's perfect, and it's just with true displacement, so the seams aren't really visible. Here should be a seam, but it's not, so you can't see the seam, right? Okay, and there's the same stuff baked out as a scalar displacement, and I can show you the map actually. There are two maps. This is the ZBrush baked map 2K with a scale of 10 and that's the Blender version 
And as you can see, only the, the margin here is different. Let's zoom a little in. Right? Only the margin is different. The other stuff looks <laughs> actually the same. So a very good map quality, just from cycles with baked out positions. Yeah. And again, for scalar displacement, you don't need connect to don't need connect to connect the UV tangent. You don't have to play with this slider here, just with the scale. So, and then there's one more example. That's a vector displacement mesh. Again, that's the multi-resolution mesh with six million polygons. I needed them to reproject all the details because it, here's an undercut. Actually, it's quite hard to recreate this uh, with scalar displacement, but this here. Yeah, you will see with vector displacement is not a problem. Multi resolution ZBrush, you can see a seam here. This is a seam, but this mesh looks like this here, right? The UV layout looks like, looks like this. It's cut into <laughs> a gazillion pieces. That's not very good for displacement, but as you can see, it works actually quite well. Um, where's the render result? Right, the ZBrush version, here's a little seam maybe here but yeah it's not really visible and with color texture this, this one would be also not visible and now the cycles version right bum looks the same <laughs> it actually has the same seam as the zbrush version there's there's no difference there's a little bit of difference but it's so minor you can't see it in a close-up so it doesn't really matter right yeah also same way, baked out as a tangent vector displacement and connected and so on. Yeah, that's it actually. It would be really nice if someone could test that. The note will be available. And yeah, thanks for watching. See you in the next tutorial.